All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And in today's video, I want to rank the three S tier fleets that are in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes right now. And we're going to look at four different categories for these fleets. So we're not just going to say, oh, who's the best on offense and defense? We got to look at some other factors in here. Who has the best accessibility? And then low star viability, because you want to not just have, you can't just say, oh, like I hate, like one of my big pet peeves is. When you say something's the best, but we don't really preface the work that's required to get there. Uh, a good example here would be the negotiator, that a lot of us would say that the negotiator is better than the malevolence. Obviously, these are not S-tier fleets anymore, so I'm using them you know, to not spoil things. But we'd say that negotiator is better than malevolence. What we don't really cover is the fact that a five-star malevolence is far superior to it than a five-star negotiator, that it's really only at seven stars, that that negotiator begins to eclipse what the malevolence can do and even then i think the malevolence still has a lot more off meta countering but that's beside the point so we're going to talk about the s tier fleets that was a huge sidebar so before we get in here let's give a huge shout out to the channel members come on where are you guys at come on i know it's on here i know i know it's in here somewhere come on there it is thank you guys so much for being channel members i really appreciate it you all are fantastic human beings if you're interested in joining channel memberships there's a link in the description down below otherwise make sure you subscribe to this channel that is free and hit that like button while you're at that little thumbs up right just like this look hit that okay that helps this too so really appreciate you guys continuing to support this channel it has been an awesome journey so let's get into s tier fleets so we're going to cover you know obviously our topic so the first category i want to cover is accessibility accessibility is obviously which one is the easiest to farm and i think this is a no-brainer that the executor is by far and away the easiest one to farm here i will give a special shout to the profundity that when you look at the fleet you need for executor you're looking at something like um you know bounty hunter ships where there's only one of the you know there's two of these that are in stores with slave one and razor crest now their drops are kind of a bit more random and then you have three hard node ships in the 2000s xanadu blood and hounds tooth with profundity you have your journey guide ship of the millennium falcon which is a very it's kind of a shoe in at this point because you need bounty hunter ships so hey you get your you know executor you're gonna get this one um you do have a hard node here and here but then you also remember for your fleet that you have these two ships which are both very easy to get and the other ships that you use for the profundity unlock like cassian biston wedge and biggs those are all ships that are very easy to get so i do want to give a huge shout out that i think the profundity's ships are easier to farm the difference here is that to get the millennium falcon you sort of need to have these things ready to go so it's kind of like a profundity loses a little bit of that accessibility because you basically need the ships for executor anyway um so i did want to like at least throw that out there profundity does need a relic nine as well which is obviously more expensive and then with the leviathan i mean there's two relic nines there so there's there's more relic levels you know you've got a conquest character and a conquest ship so you know we've got a you know, there's a lot there's a lot to unpack in that situation obviously our king does not need a ship he could just go out in space and swap things left and right and be fine you know the death star laser would shoot at him and he'd just eat it for breakfast lunch and dinner because wampa is king all right now offense and this is where i think people are going to start not liking me a little bit now leviathan just got some buffs and it's going to get more if you guys missed that note from capital games they basically came out and said that we will be adjusting leviathan further particularly looking at the way that um you know profundity and chimera were beating it which is defense but offensively this ship is just phenomenal i i go in and press auto that's that's what i do mirror matches can probably get a little bit tricky uh i haven't done enough of them i truly would say i haven't done enough of them yet to know what that mirror match is like but this is the this is the pinnacle of galaxy of heroes right now and it looks like it's only going to get better so that's kind of hilarious now i have profundity over executor and this comes from the fact that the profundity in terms of the mirror match a profundity mirror match is much easier to win at, like outside of rng there's a lot of other ways to ensure that you can win that comparative to the executor mirror match where i think there's a lot more rng and so that to me signals that profundity is probably a better offensive fleet that by using the control of it you're actually going to be doing more 
Whereas with Executor, there's a little bit less wiggle room there. There's a lot of RNG factors in that fight. And then, obviously, right now, Executor really struggles against Leviathan significantly more than Profundity does at the current moment. Uh, so I did want to at least, you know, bring those things into discussion. Now, that's, again, offensive, right? I think offensively, you know, Profundity, I think, has an edge over the Executor. I'd say, too, that Executor versus Profundity has less of a chance of winning than Profundity versus Executor. They, I just think the Executor... That Profundity just brings something else to the table that Executor doesn't have. And that's okay, right? It's it's released newer. It's a more expensive ship, so they had to make it slightly better. Um, I'd still say there's some parity, but I would give the edge to Profundity. Um, now, defensively, Leviathan, again, still number one. There's just, there's not, it's going to be number one, and it looks like it's only going to get a more solidified number one if more patches come through. But I put Executor here in front of Profundity, and I did this for a couple reasons. So, first, like I mentioned, the mirror match that, you know, oh, well, Profundity in a mirror match is much better than the Executor mirror match. So, yes, that means Profundity is probably a better ship offensively, but it also means that the Executor is better on defense because there's a lot of RNG that can swing its way. Uh, and I'd say that goes for the, like you guys saw in my fleets here, that... I've got your, you know, what I call my GAC defense, where I run the triple attacker variant. And this is because this stops the first order counter. Now, this obviously opens up some other counters in the game, like the Empire counter. This makes a lot, like, I find profundity matches much easier against this fleet than I do the other version. Which some people might not say, but I 1000% think this is a much easier fleet to beat than this one. Um, with profundity. that it, I, like, I win both of them all the time, but, I mean, I've you can demolish this fleet much faster than you can this one because of the Hound's Tooth. Then, yeah, so I think that with, you know, with that said, you run the version with the Hound's Tooth and people say, oh, well, First Order counters that. First Order 100% does counter this, right? I'm not going to pretend it doesn't. There's, a, there's some RNG factors there. You can definitely minimize it and get pretty consistent against it. But there's still that, you know, RNG here that I think is not at quite as present with say like profundity and with profundity right the big the big issue here on defense for me there's obviously the fact that you know all like that your profundity mirror match is easier you know there's not that real rng factor as much you know executor can still beat this but the big thing for me is that the executor um on a defensive standpoint you can set because you can change that lineup in my mind that makes it that kind of puts it in a tier above that you can change that lineup and you like just by switching out those two ships can make it completely different of what your opponent needs whereas profundity you don't really switch the lineup and there's some common counters there particularly i would say with the empire and tie bomber that the tie bomber can basically shut this entire fleet down one of the big ones that I would use here is even before you were to get, say, the Scythe and even TIE Interceptor or TIE Defender up and running, there's still some very consistent counters with running Sith Bomber, Emperor's Shuttle, Vader, and then your first reinforcement will be the TIE Bomber. You come in and it, it, you really can do a lot of good stuff there that I think against the executor it's definitely i don't know i've always found that the profundity fight a little i find that one a lot more familiar than i do the executor one maybe i'm just biased uh, that could very well be the case but i would say executor gets the nod on defense here um i've probably rambled enough about this but i do like to mention that then the last one is low star viability and here i've got to give a huge shout out to the profundity i find that at low stars this is by far and away the most superior fleet and I say that in terms of not only the mirror match, in terms of beating the executor, right? In terms of beating his counterpart. And even in terms of trying to counter the Leviathan, I still think that Profundity kind of has that edge over executor in terms of the low star. Uh, I think a four star Profundity offensively is a fantastic ship. And as someone who has a six star Profundity, I do perfectly fine. Like I don't have any issues. And if you were to take my six star profundity against a seven star profundity, obviously you gotta gotta know what you're doing a little bit, but you can win much more frequently than you would six star executor versus a seven star. I'm not saying that you won't win the other way around, but you have a much better chance of doing it with the profundity. 
And that's why I give it that low star rating is I think that with lower stars, this ship still performs really, really well. Um, and I think with the executor, your big problem with the low stars, it not only makes match, you know, mirror matches and some of the other things easier, but it opens up a lot more off meta windows because it takes longer to get the ultimate. You're not getting quite as much healing and that goes for all the ships, but I feel with profundity, the stars don't add quite as much value as they do to the other ships that, you know, you think of executor, you know, that mirror match is all about who, you know, can be who goes first where profundity is not as big of a deal. You know, with Leviathan, I 1000% think that this ship needs to be max stars as soon as possible because it's, and the big thing for me really with Leviathan, your problem here is the ability to damage the hangers. So if I was to come in here, um, I think it's this one. So the capital ship sabotage ability, this is what happens at seven stars. And this is where the next reinforcement is destroyed immediately upon deployment. And one of the things that a lot of players have been noticing is you only need three ships to beat the Leviathan with profundity. That you go to your profundity, I don't need to call in reinforcements to beat that fleet as long as I can get my ultimate. Now, the it's, it's saying it that way, it sounds so much worse than what it really is. Because in reality, you use this ability, you not only are going to increase the cooldown of their call reinforcement by one, but the first ship they bring in is going to get destroyed anyways. And so because these Leviathan matches only last a certain point to where they're just going to take over the ship, right? That this cooldown of five, like once this happens, right, y y the other ship can't call in any other reinforcement. So it's kind of hard to be like, oh, well, Profundity only needs three ships. It only needs three ships because that's all Leviathan really allows it to get out there. So, yeah, I mean, you don't want to use those because if you're playing in GAC and you're attacking their Leviathan with your Profundity, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, like, how do I say this properly? Uh -huh. you, like, with your, if you're attacking their ship, what you're going to want to do is just hold on to your reinforcements and win with these three, and that way you get the full banners for those reinforcements that you didn't call in, because if you lose a ship, that's like minus four banners right there. So, I, you know, I, I, I want to make that known a little bit, that that is something that I look at, um, and so, like, with because that ship is going away, it makes Leviathan that much harder at seven stars compared to earlier where they can still bring in that reinforcement. There's not that penalty. And with Leviathan, what a lot of us com have complained about is that there's a lack of damage. So being able to kill that ship upon reinforcement at seven stars makes up for a lot of that lack of damage. Think of somebody like Darth Nihilus. He doesn't deal that much damage. But you get him to the point where he can annihilate somebody and you're game set match right your, your love and life it's the same thing with this ship that without that ability you are nerfing the amount of damage your fleet can do and potentially timing out so that's why i say that the seven star is really what you want um but yeah guys i mean that's the way that i would rate these things obviously you guys can tell that i personally think that leviathan is going to be the best fleet here at seven stars if you're going to get this fleet at low stars, I think the Profundity is still the one that has the best low star viability. Now, I think a four star Executor is still fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Like, Executor at low stars is still really good. There's a big gap right here. Um, the, the difference in my mind comes to a four star Executor trying to beat a seven star Profundity. Probably a little bit more difficult than a four star Profundity trying to beat a seven star Executor. Um, I would say that that's probably... You know, those two fights probably go a little bit differently. Um, and then in the mirror matches, obviously, it's a lot easier. Offensively, you get it, Leviathan. But, you know, you can see that the way I look at the offense, I think Profundity still has an edge. Defensively, I'd give that edge to Executor because I does think it brings an RNG factor at times that some of the other fleets simply don't have. So that's the way I look at these things. You know, I, I just thought it'd be a fun kind of video to do, especially now that Leviathan's been out. We know it's going to get more buffs. It's kind of, you know, it's going to be curious to see what those things do offensively and defensively. So let me know your guys' thoughts. As always, make sure you like and subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you all in the next video. May the force be with you. Cheers.